Hey guys, Poncho here. I wanted to share with you uh, my current gear, crystals, add-ons, favorite combo, and a few common techniques that I use in PvP. Uh, specifically, I use these in T1 Node Wars. This is not really an advanced guide, but nor is it an absolute beginner's guide for Tamer. So for more in-depth guides, I suggest you head to the Tamer Discord. There's lots of helpful information there to help you get started. I put the link down in the description below. So here's my current gear and crystal setup. I prioritize trying to hit 5k HP to ensure I hit the cap for the start of the Node Wars. So with the current uh, meta of Node Wars, every 20 minutes you lose 500 HP. Um, it's really important to hit the cap right off the bat. That way you're not fighting an uphill battle. Additionally, I usually buy the HP buff, which increases your max health by 100. Additionally, I make sure to maximize my percent base modifiers, such as special attack evasion and critical damage from my corrupted crystals. The skill add-ons are a less important feature for me. Ideally, you should build your add-ons around the skill of the combos that you're using the most, uh, which is what I've done here. This add-on selection is specifically designed for one, T1 Node Wars, and two, my favorite combo, which I'm going to teach you guys here. Selecting Beast Rampage as your core skill is an absolute essential, it's a necessity at this point. Um, none of the other skills do anything particularly great in T1 Node Wars. Super Armors um, are not particularly effective as they scale very poorly late game in Node Wars. So relying on a Frog Guard, even though it has a small cone shaped protection, as long as you can rotate that protection, you can find threats and point your Frontal Guard at the threat, there's gonna be absolutely no problem. They're not gonna blow up your Frontal Guard like in open world. Some people have been taking Legendary Peace Dance. I think that's completely unnecessary. The only thing you're getting from this is a fancy CC, and our kit is chock full of great CCs. The problem with Tamer is not the inability to catch people, it's the inability to do damage to them in a protected fashion. Rebombs, I choose these three rebombs. Resonance is a great um, super armor skill. It also does a pretty decent damage, has a decent AoE. Uh, Legendary Beast Claw is pretty shit, um, but I like it because it flows nicely right after resonance. Um, it is unprotected at the start of it, so you have to be very careful. And Lightning Burn, uh, I just picked this up recently. It's a nice, absolutely last resort movement skill. Without further ado, here's my combo. So it's important for this long combo to work that you have at least a decent amount of attack speed. A shortened version of that same combo, which is very important, which I use often in late game T1 node wars, uh, or if I'm slowed, or if I fat finger a combo and I fuck it all up and I have way less time to finish the combo than I thought I did, really you just need three things. You need the Moonlight Strike, which you can use with or without the extra flow which also helps as a linger essay. You'll hot bar intimidation, and then you'll flow right into core beast rampage. One really cool thing about having flow intimidation uh, on the hot bar, and just in general now, is that you can Q cancel it into Q block really, really quick. So you can float someone or try to float someone and then before really the animation even finishes you can hit Q hold Q and be back in a protected forward there so intimidation super great CC I use it all the time even though it's unprotected 
uh, the unprotectedness of it is very, very small if you know what you're doing. So you can also do this on the side dashes so you can go leaves into an intimidation and Q block cancel it there. So here I'm gonna go over three of my kind of favorite catch techniques. Void trap, and void trap is gonna be your bread and butter catch, requires no skill, everyone's gonna hate you for it. But hitting void, uh, typically I will use fearful trembling to get out of it. So there are a multitude of ways to cancel void lightning. Void lightning, AKA the dog trap, is one of our greatest CC catches. Uh, but you have to play very defensively to use it. You have to get the enemy to come to you or you have to place the trap where the enemy is going to go. So having a predictive approach to void trap is really powerful. It can help lock down large areas of the battlefield. Really important in 1VXs and no doors. So you usually want to do it where maybe an enemy might escape or where they may go next because there's a bit of a delay. Um, specifically for 100% ults, what I'll do is I'll dive into a group of people and I want to bait them into the Void Lightning. So I'll usually do something like that, wrap around them, and then hit them with my 100%. When I pop my Void, the Void is actually going to be off on your right hand side. It's not going to be completely centered on you. So I'll try to orient where I want the void, I want the void trap to hit here, and I want these enemies to rush this way. I'll usually cancel it with a bolt jolt, and then I'll flip tree climb towards where that void is procced. Standing in it, you're in an SA, but most people want to cancel it and get into a better position to um, capitalize off of that large CC effect. So what I do if I'm going to be bombing with 100%, so that'll look something like this in real time, as if these four scarecrows are enemies, I'm gonna run in front of them, place a trap, protect myself with an iframe, and blast their buttholes with 100%. One of my favorite catches that I used very often which I think most people don't know about, is this Howling. Highlang Howling. This is one of the best CCs in the game. It's completely unprotected, doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it stiffs people from very far away. Um, and it's a little bit buggy. It'll actually sometimes work way beyond the reticle. So the normal distance is when you can see those reticles, um, you can cast and you'll be able to hit with that skill. This skill, for whatever reason, you can hit from beyond that. Oh my god, you got Did it. You Did you see that? Did you see that? That's so fucking nuts, dude, man. He wasn't even in my reticle distance. I just no, threw it dude. out there. <laughs> yeah, he was out of mind for stuff. <laughs> no uh, the last catch technique that I like to use, and I use often in my videos and my streams, when I'm fighting a very aggressive class, particularly a class that can close the distance very quickly, something like Musa Mewa with their Dragon Bite or Red Moon, um, or a Warrior with their Spear Throw and Charge, um, even things like Hashashins, with, Hashashins and Ninjas with their Block Jumps, um, you want to bait them towards you and you want to set up a counter ambush. And the way we do that is I think of creating an L shape to counterattack and try to get behind them. Getting behind them is not super uh, necessary for this to work, but it just allows you a bit of space um, to line up a nice counter grab. And typically when these classes charge at you very aggressively, they're looking to either grab or CC, and most of those abilities tend to lock them in place at least for a, a couple milliseconds. And those milliseconds are enough where you can grab them pretty easily. And this is all it really looks like. I'm using leaves and I'm using legendary beast power for a super armor mobility right into the grab. Super simple. So you can close a lot of distance. You can 
increase the tempo, slow the tempo down, um, and give yourself the time needed to line up a perfect grab. One thing to note about the counter ambush kind of engage is that if you're quick, if you have really good frames per second and decent enough ping, or if there's a great mismatch in ping and FPS between yourself and the opponent, this engage and this catch, this counter ambush, can look way faster than it is. Um, that's just because of the shitty way BDO is put together. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope this was helpful for you. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them down below. I'll try to get to you. Maybe I'll make another video.